So welcome to another episode of Plug and Play EV. I'm Steve. Today we're returning to Chicopee, Massachusetts, the first Electrify America station that went in all those years ago in May 2018. We visited this station about a month ago, looking at the upgrades that were coming and the new equipment that uh, Electrify America had in the ground but had not activated yet. Said we'd come back and here we are. Now I waited a little bit longer, partly for uh, scheduling reasons, but also because you want to see how it's gone over the last month or so. They replaced it. Uh, right at the end of September. This is now the end of October. You want to see how that looks after a month or so of use, everybody coming back, trying to use the station and uh, see what the equipment looks like, how it's been faring and whether people have been able to get a charge is the biggest thing, obviously. So let's head over there and see what we can get. No big change on the battery, so that's perfectly fine. It's just sitting at the ambient temperature, just slightly above, and even just a little bit of uh, heat from the fast charging will push that up above 70 degrees Fahrenheit and into the sweet spot where we won't really need any battery thermal management. You can see five out of five CCS plugs. It doesn't list the Chatamo, which is interesting. That's on the far signet unit, one of the uh, previous generation signet units, and all of these, I believe, were the next generation fourth gen signets. When we select the charger here, we've got instead of that big long number, just 01, 02, 03, 04, which is kind of the suffix on the end. They have the station number, which is the location overall, and then the end number. Usually it was dash 01, dash 02, etc. I want to try a few different things here. I'll probably pull into this spot first because the Ionic 5's charging port is on the back passenger side. Uh, but I also want to try this spot and see if the charge cable up there reaches all the way around the back of the space and into the Ionic 5's charge port if it uh, is pulled nose in because we'll usually have to reverse into those kind of stations if it was. top of the screen they've changed this that used to be all the way at the top maybe it still is in uh, some places but uh, right now they just say charger 03 so it's fairly simple uh, I still like the EVgo method of naming them a little better but uh, you know this is in a better location and it's uh, much simpler to see in the app which one it is you've got the new labels down there hyperfast that will obviously trigger some people but uh, it is what it is the 350 and the three bolts there are still pretty clear 66 degrees Fahrenheit on the battery temperature. Electrify America app in Android Auto, same as we were looking at just before. Nearby should always capture the one that you're next to. We've got one down in Connecticut as well, but uh, right now this is the one. So select charger again, easy to see number three right there. We will start our charge. how much you'll get from that. Actually, that's limited here to about two foot. Okay, so slightly anemic by the Ionic 5 standards, but you did see on there something that we've noticed on other chargers <clears throat> like this, the charge requested via vehicle. So this is what the Ionic 5 is asking for right now, and I think that will bear up as we look at Talk Pro here. But, um, the car is limiting this to 167 amps. So this is presumably, yeah, you can see now actually, the uh, battery heater going to work, that's what that means in the Ionic 5 and I think the EV6 Genesis GV60 would be the same. It's trying to warm it up now, it does seem a bit silly given we're at a 67 degrees Fahrenheit, almost at 70 on the max. We'll see that turn off pretty quickly here. It's trying to get past 69, 70 degrees. It's got that predefined uh, parameter to get it to before it's uh, happy. But this is, you know, 
not, not the purpose of this session, but we're uh, waiting for this battery preconditioning option. They've had it in uh, Norway and a bunch of European locations, uh, able to go to the dealer and get it uh, installed as firmware. And we're waiting to see if that comes to US and uh, Canadian users, because this kind of thing will happen. Now, you know, that's not the end of the world. It's not horrific to be at 130 kilowatts. You see it disappear right there, just as we hit 69 degrees Fahrenheit average. So you can see it already ramping up. It's uh, gone up a little bit in voltage, but for the most part, it's this amperage that's ramping. I don't know how long I'll stay on this one because I kind of want to try the other one as well. Yeah, if it gets busy, you see, I won't be able to use that. So this uh, is a little bit um, different. It says balanced. You'll see a little extra applique on the uh, label here as we get out. And uh, this is the one, or these two presumably then are split between the uh, the power levels from the cabinet. So they will be able to go up to 350 if I plug in here by myself, which I'll do in a sec here, I think. It should give me the similar whack that I can get here, 200 plus. Uh, if something else plugged into the one next to it, uh, that power would be then shared between the two. So it'd be pretty close to maximum. You'd still get, you know, out of 350, uh, close to maybe 170 if it was split evenly between the two. And they'd have to be both requesting that full power, obviously. So you'd have to kind of do a bit more digging to see what the um, split actually looked like in real world uh, use. But... Uh... Okay, so chatted with him, he actually likes that one, and I said I was going to move to test this one, so he's going to give that a go as it stands. But uh, I want to try these balance chargers and see if this cable reaches all the way around the back of this car. So how much will you get out of this? So it's not the full amount that we saw in Valley Stream. I'm sure they can get more out of these, but they seem to only have wanted to give it about two foot, maybe. It's not perfect, because it's kind of below the bumper there. But that's pretty firmly in. Let's see what kind of power we get. So as I say, this is number two. Let's see what we get to start with here. There's your charge speed requested by vehicle. Current charge speed, maybe that would tell you something that the station was the laggard. You see it's slightly faster over here than over here. Let's see. That's pretty good. And we may get to test it here because there's a pretty nice F-150 Lightning. But as you can see, it's delivering 230 and the charge speed requested is about 237. Okay, so this actually worked out pretty well. I got to do the things I wanted, um, but we are getting a pretty nice rate here. Amperage 297, volts 769. The uh, charge speed requested by the car right now is uh, 243 kilowatts. It's delivering 235. Um, and we'll see if that changes as the F-150 Lightning plugs in. Actually, I'm pretty happy with that because I want to see how these balanced chargers work in real life. Trying to figure out whether this, it seems a bit of a coincidence that this just started to uh, cut in half on a balance charger when someone else plugs in. So maybe the station knows that's the case, but it does say on the station that charge requested by the vehicle is 141 kilowatts. So if you believe that number, then we are the limiting factor. So that they're actually pulling out. So now that is, I know that is the Ionic 5 in this case because no one else is plugged in now. Maybe we'll see if it jumps up. So, <clears throat> interesting, no markers on here, it doesn't tell you any speed or anything. I'll tell you up here, so 1, 
does have that, nothing much else. So it's slightly odd that they haven't put that on here, whereas the others do. Maybe they had a limitation. Same two foot retraction. Okay, so for the sake of testing, as Eric at News Coulomb says, trust but verify. We'll uh, jump in here, charger number one. No one else has pulled up, so I'm not uh, hogging a station and we know number two works, so there's at least one more available. Let's start this charge and see if it works. Okay, and same as I say. And you don't actually have a requested by vehicle here. Capped at 160, but again, 75% stays charged, so. Top back down now. So an interesting session. The activation questions notwithstanding, I tried three of those four stations and uh, first try every time uh, got hooked up and went to town. From my perspective, hardware not having any problems. I activated all of them through the Android Auto version of the Electrify America app, worked uh, first time every time. Not so easy for some of the others there. Um, a Hyundai Ionic 5, which is kind of good because you get to see the direct correlation between uh, you know, this vehicle and uh, uh, him having to unplug, replug a couple of times on that uh, first one. I think he started getting a charge and then he wanted to switch station um, and again had to plug in a couple of times. Now that maybe speaks to the need for a certain step of connections and uh, the, following the process. Didn't sound exactly like uh, it was a lot different than what I did, but he was using the app. Maybe there was some timeout issues. Then on station one, the F-150 Lightning coming up plugging in and trying a few times by the sound of it i asked uh you know what was the uh, process there tried the app tried the uh, ford plug and charge didn't seem to be able to get it uh, going and then successfully charging on the uh, end station at 170 odd kilowatts at uh, 40 percent data charge so you know again people getting a charge so on that um sense you know they had the stalls they needed but it took maybe five minutes longer than you would hope for um, and then again, expand that out to today is not, you know, it's a midweek uh, morning, kind of 10 a.m. So far from the busiest time, put that into a rush hour or especially worse on some of the peak holiday travel that's coming up with Thanksgiving and Christmas. It starts to become an issue. Plus you get stuff like, you know, thermal throttling and a bunch of different things. Um, it's just an interesting kind of conglomeration of uh, things, none of which on their own are showstoppers. But as we move into that, you know, early majority kind of section of the adoption curve and with a lot more models coming out new EV drivers getting on the uh, the market it's going to get worse if there's not more stalls if there aren't more locations and stations then we end up having you know people who take a while to get started have to move stalls it just becomes a real kind of congestion point and choke point for you know on the day the travel but also EV adoption as a whole Okay, and just to be a diligent tester, one final session after lunch at the Chadamo and CCS combo station number four. On the screen, that should turn to please plug in. All right, so I'm four for four. <clears throat> and actually, that's not a bad starting rate at all. 75 kilowatts at 89%. That will tumble, I'm sure. Choose the one you're at, start charge, plug in. Every single one, this has worked. As far as we can report from this station, every single station will give a charge. We've plugged in first time, only moved because we wanted to. 
and each one works just Take fine. Anyway, the uh, overall positives of the Electrify America upgrades I think are clear. The equipment's better, the cable management's great, uh, power should be good in a lot more situations, at least compared to what they had before. Power sharing could be a step backwards in some cases, but you know, I'd rather have everybody kind of start to understand. People need to know their cars, we need to understand that a bolt can get 50, 55 kilowatts. Uh, Hummer EV can get 300 plus kilowatts and there's a lot in the middle. So over to you, what do you think? Have you been able to try one of these newly upgraded sites? If you have had a chance, what did you think? Did they start right up? Did you have to fiddle with them a little bit? Um, did they give you full power? Were other users able to get them started? Let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching as always and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers!